Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
to challenge you to try something new. Look for a new face. Look for someone you haven't greeted in a long time. Look for someone who might need an air high five or air hug or a real hug. Ask them first. I know that sounds strange, but just embrace your neighbor in whatever way that you and they both feel comfortable. Ask them their favorite thing they do this summer. portion of our service, we want to come together to our call of worship, and it's uh, from our, in your hymnal number 300, I, Paul, say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. And the Spirit, what is contrary to the sinful nature. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. <laughs> Idolatry and witchcraft. <laughs> Fits of rage and selfish ambition. <laughs> Drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. Faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Amen. Now we come to a part of our service where we give back to what God has freely given to us. So if you have tithes or offerings, there's plates at the exit doors. We just put them in there before we leave. Uh, and then we can bow our heads and we can pray over the tithes, the offerings that are brought into this storehouse. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be stewards over the gifts that you have brought into this house. We pray, Father God, that you bless those who are freely given to you. And we pray that you give us the wisdom, you give us the courage, and you give us the strength that we may use it to your will and your kingdom be multiplied. In Jesus' most holy name, we do pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for coming so we can fellowship together as God's people. Amen? Amen. Now we're here to talk about our connections points for what God is doing in this house and outside in the community. And I can say it's such a blessing. It's been a while since I've been here, but uh, I'm at home. <laughs> so it's good to be here. Now, some of the announcements we have at our connections point, we've got a lot going on here. So uh, youth group, Wednesdays, August 24th, 25th at 7 p.m. So that's every other Wednesday, 7 p.m. Okay, for, for now it'll be August 25th, and then the rest will be to come. We also have watch care meeting today at uh, Doc Clock's house from 2.30 to 3.30. It's a new subgroup that has been formed. We want to be able to stay connected to the members as much as possible. Pastor CG, even though he's a superman, He's not every man, and he needs help from us to stay connected. Amen? Amen. So the Watch Care is here to support Pastor CG and his ministry to minister to the congregation. So uh, if you're interested, meeting at Doc, Doc Clock's house from 2.30 to 3.30 this afternoon. Uh, monthly offering is for the missionaries and will help support the work of the missionaries, Jenny Pazinski and the Myers family. They're our overseas missionaries. So that's where the monthly offering for the missionaries want to go this month. 
next steps following service today, there's going to be a meeting. There's going to be Q&A format, and we're going to talk about the future of the church. Amen? Amen. If the church doesn't have a future, the church what? Dies. Or the congregation dies. The church ain't going to die. You know what I mean. So if you're interested, be there. Small groups. We have a lot of small groups. We have a new small group forming. Pastor C.G. and his wife, Liz. You want to talk about that? Okay. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, so we got a small group that we're starting up. I, I've talked to a few key people here at church, and we're thankful that you are interested. It's a small group. It is for uh, geared towards young families, young adults is, is the purpose. It will be beginning on September 17th. That's a Friday night, 5 to 7 p.m. here. We are going to figure out our, our you know, child care for everything. Liz and I have been talking about like making a rotation schedule, getting the Christian Ed subgroup involved and helping out with that as well. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll figure, we will figure things out. It's going to happen here. The first hour, we want to be able to encourage family dinner time. So we'll have dinner together. Uh, the church will be providing the main port portion of the meal, but there is a sign-up sheet if you're interested, and you can uh, sign up. Maybe you can bring a snack, or you can bring some drinks, or a sides, or something like that, or dessert, whatever you feel comfortable with. And if you feel like you can't bring anything, that's okay. We just pray that you would consider joining up with this small group. We have no idea who's going to be coming, so uh, please sign up, because uh, space is limited. We don't want to become a large group. We want it to be a small group, and we'll figure out if we have to divide up into multiple groups if we get too many people. But the purpose of this small group is to gather together, um, to support one another in prayer, to support each other through Bible study. And uh, I know, and, and we just really want to rival with the men's group, because we know that's starting up and everything. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's uh first and third fridays of each month starting in september all the way to the uh till december 17th so and then we'll figure out what we want to do for the future after that so if you're interested sign up sheet is on the connections board right outside thank you so much because it, it's, so, it's so important for all of us to come together, period. But especially for men, and we wanted to create a place where men can come together, talk about the word of God, and just support each other in our growth in the Lord. And, and God has truly blessed us in that endeavor. So we just invite you out. You know, if, you want to, if, if you're available to come on Thursdays, please do. Wives, if you have husbands, if you have sons, uh, if you have uncles or anyone who you feel as though may need some kind of support in a non-judging, free-flowing environment, please direct them to one of the men here, uh, Gene, myself, Tom, uh, <coughs> or anyone else that have come to the, to, to the men's um, fellowship, Russ, you know, and they'll let you know that it's, a, it's an inviting environment and very encouraging. Thank you so much, Chris. <clears throat> We come now time <clears throat> to our children's blessing. So I invite our kids to come on up front to receive our blessing. So what we do is we extend out our hands. Can you girls do that? Thanks so much for coming. We're going to hold out our hands, and the congregation is going to pray over us by sending out their hands. All right, so let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day you've given us. Lord, we are thankful for our new to be able to run around and play games in the future, Lord. And we pray for our children as they get ready for school coming up, as it's going to be an exciting fall. We are excited for the various um, children's ministries here that we have planned for our kids, and both for our, even for our teens, our students, Lord, that we are excited for youth groups coming up. So bless all of these children, uh, for it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. You can go to Junior Church with Miss Leslie or I think it's church. Well, let's go to God in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. Uh, 
the rain was much needed. It reminds us that the fall is near. School starts back up again soon, Lord. And um, some of us might be fearful of that. Some of us might be joyful in that. We pray for understanding in our lives of where we are in our own lives for school and for work. If, uh, you know, vacations are over and whatnot, Lord. So we pray for those that are suffering right now as well, that weren't able to fully enjoy this summer. Um, We ask for healing in their lives. We ask for protection in the lives of those that are suffering in Afghanistan. We ask for purpose once again in our own country and that we bring ourselves into alignment with God, with your vision, Lord. And Lord, I pray for our church as we are experiencing new visions as well. As we think of the children, as we think of the youth, as we think of the music ministry. This is our chance to to rebuild, Lord. And we know that you have ordained the correct person or people that will come and grace the doors of our church to help in that. Because Lord, we can't do it alone. We think we can. We, we, we get cocky sometimes, Lord. I think we can take care of this whole church, Lord. But then I am, I feel burdened by others' hardships, Lord, and the hardships of the church. And, but I am so thankful for dedicated volunteers. I think of our Christian ed group that stepped right on in very quickly, Lord, and thankful for that. We're thankful for our worship group that's willing to, to think of, of some new options for our church's music. And we play for clarity in that vision as we talk more about that later today. Again, thank you for giving us life. For those who are get, given a second chance at today that we might be able to love you a little bit more. That we're able to trust you just a little bit more. And that we can forgive others just a little bit more. For it is in your precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, last week we talked about influencers, right? We, we made a list. Somehow Kardashians came up on that list. I still don't understand that as an influencer. But we had some pretty good ones on there. Our friends, our bosses, our family, our peers, um, some others. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and, uh, and we talked about, what else did we talk about? Does anybody remember? Doing your homework. Now we're doing a series. Go ahead, Jocelyn. Yes, positive in, positive out, right? Leaning on that as opposed to the negativity to be an influencer for God. Tiny, what else did we learn? Very true. Very true. We talked about, you know, how to upload, you know, a picture to Facebook or to your social media, or maybe just texting a friend. So I encourage you to keep on taking out your phones throughout the weeks here at church to uh, be an influencer for God. I won't take any offense if I see a phone out, taking a picture or taking videos. Go ahead. This month, we'll be studying the ways of influencers, and we will come to find that. And let's say this together. It's time to reclaim and recover our original influencer, Jesus Christ. And it is time to be a positive influence on others. Now, today I I found a video uh, just a few days ago. It came out a couple of years ago uh, that was very impactful in my understanding of what a social media influencer really is and what they're capable of. I want you to take a look at this interview. His name is Simon Huck. He was of the public relations firm Command PR. And it's funny that his, his, the name of his company is Command, which is the name of my sermon today. So let's take a look at this quick video. You're a brand broker. Brand broker. What does that mean? So in a nutshell, I connect brands with celebrities. Okay. And how does it work in today's day and age? <laughs> Well, it's the wild, wild west, right? Because there's so many options. When I started 15 years ago, you really just looked at top tier actors and actresses, entertainers, performers. Now you have influencers. So there is an influencer for dog walking, for cupcake design, from fitness, health, wellness. I mean, they're all now 
part of the marketer's options. How so, much do they get paid? So celebrities who have a following of 50, 60 to 100 million, their posts can range anywhere from 200 to 500 to $1 million for one Instagram post. That is mind boggling. It is. I mean, when I talk about it in the office, we laugh. We're like, oh, God, these numbers used to shock us. And now we're just so used to it. But if you think about it, one social post with one, in with one celebrity who has over 100 million followers has more of an impact than a primetime TV commercial. Why? The reach. Can you imagine 100 million people looking at a post, engaging with it, liking, commenting, and then going and exploring that brand's page? Last week, we had a social media star crash a brand's website from one social post. And I think when you think of an influencer, you have to think of them as someone who are, is not only an arbitrator of taste and influence, but also someone who connects in a way that a celebrity may not be able to. Does anything surprise you anymore in this realm? <laughs> Absolutely nothing, nothing. Everything's up for grabs? I mean, when we, we actually, I, I was talking to a colleague yesterday and we looked through all our records and we haven't done an endorsement deal with a celebrity who has not been on social media in five years. What? Five years. So the message is clear. If you are a celebrity and you are not on social media, you are losing money, period. We are not coming to you with a deal. That's mind boggling to hear of how influential social media influencers are. You know, a following of a hundred million people will get you so much money. And I think about it, to, can you just imagine the influence of Jesus was on social media today, right? When, when you think of the most popular social media influencer, they often will like or, or follow a brand or a company, which brings, you know, hundreds to that company's website. But if they just film a simple video on TikTok or, or YouTube or their own website, and they're saying something like, you know, I really think you should get these new headphones that I just got from Sony, you will immediately see thousands of people flocking to the store's websites to buy those Sony headphones. It's, it's crazy. An encouragement or a simple sentence from these influencers becomes a command. Command is such a tough word though, right? When we think about the word command, it, the definition says to give an authoritative order. I mean, but these influencers online, they don't sound commanding, do they? they they're pretty innocent in their way of, of advertising, if you want to call it that. So can a command sound doable? Hmm. It reminds me of, you know, raising the boys and, uh, you know, our three and six-year-old, Owen and Logan and uh, uh, Liz, I owe them another dollar, it sounds like, because I'm talking about them in the sermon. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's interesting because like, I was thinking about it as I was getting them upstairs to get ready for bed. You know, if I just say go to bed or go upstairs, go brush your teeth, go brush your teeth, they're not going to want to do it. Right. But if I say, hey, if I give that positive more com command to speak, we should go brush our teeth because then we can go read a book. Oh my gosh, it's so much easier to get them up those stairs at that point. So that negative command can, is not as effective as that positive command. Simple commands are doable. Positive commands are attractive. I think it's why a text message from my phone can be simple to ask you know, something simple to somebody. So, so you ever do that? It feels like it's, it's more simple for me to just text Liz, hey, get some, you know, bread uh, at the store. Simple, easy, direct. No need to call, no need to type in the numbers, no need to say, hey, how you doing? Hey, can you do this for me? It's more direct, it's more quicker. I know my generation and, and younger generations has this affinity with these cell phones that we don't want to, you know, call people. We only want to text people, right? After all, it's a big influence on our lives. Ever since I got my first cell phone in college, um, which was this uh, Nokia. You remember those, right? I mean, you could, you could drop those things from on top of a building and somehow their battery will be better <laughs> when they drop. It's crazy. Here, here's, you know, this is one that I kind of used. And then there's one that uh, I was able to get. Uh, this really older one. And this revolutionized texting as well, because usually you'd have to hit the numbers and you have to hit that seven, four times to get an S out of it. But then this one revolutionized when it did 
that. Ooh, ah, I have a full keyboard now and I can still drop it and it's totally fine, right? <laughs> I had to find this out, uh, out of uh, Liz, Liz uh, mom's <laughs> uh, stuff. We just found it. I was like, this will be perfect. <laughs> I mean, did you ever know, actually, the, the world's first text message? It was sent from a computer to a cell phone by British engineer Neil Papworth. As reported by the CTV News, Papworth sent the text message to his boss on December 3rd, 1992. And it simply read, Merry Christmas. And this single text revolutionize the way that we communicate today. Since this is an introduction in 1992, though, text messaging or SMS, meaning short messaging service, has become the preferred method of communication in the world today. More utilized than phone calls, more utilized than emails, or even snail mail. <clears throat> in the book, Diffusion of Innovations, it describes how new ideas and new technologies spread in different cultures. The model describes the adoption or the acceptance of a new product or innovation by grouping how different people can come to accept the innovation or technology. The first people, uh, the first persons to use a new product or a new technology, they're called the innovators, followed by those who are referred to as the early adopters. Next come the early and the late majority. And then the last group to eventually adopt a product is called the laggards. Some people in my family were slow at adopting to text message. <laughs> and I think I got my first text message when my mom finally upgraded to a smartphone. My parents, I think, I think they wanted to communicate with me in a better way and saw this, you know, it was happening a lot for me. I was just texting people uh, all the time uh, in my own social group. They would call and they would call and they call while I'm at college. And then they realized if it, they just left a text message, I would get back to them in the same way much quicker. So they tried their best at adopting to this new way of communication through text messages. My parents and, and maybe some of you parents out there have come to find that you must communicate with your children by their chosen means, right? I mean, I know, I know some uh, teenage, uh, moms of teenagers who have Instagram solely so they can talk to their own children. Right, Liz? Like Becca, Becca Booth? Oh, man, I, she would always tell me that. She said, the only time I can actually get a hold of my kids is if I talk to them on Instagram. They had to become a part of the majority, even though the parents wanted desperately to be that laggard of the group. And sometimes the church can be a laggard when it comes to this diffusion of innovations. Actually, and it doesn't even have to be some kind of innovation. It may have nothing to do with technology at all. It may simply be the method in which we communicate the message of salvation in Jesus Christ. Jesus gave the church a fairly specific and positive command to connect with people. He called us to connect with people so that they would become disciples of his. It's called the Great Commission. And we find it in our passage today. So I encourage you to open up your Bible, whether it's a physical one or on your phone. And we're going to looking at Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. I'll be looking at the NIV. You can look on the screen or pull it up on your, uh, in your Bible or phone. I'll wait for an amen when I hear you have it. Amen. Amen. All right, let's read it. Then Jesus said, or excuse me, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We've talked about the seismic shifts that are occurring in, in our culture in this series called Influencers. Certainly with technology, I think that's what this message series is all about, staying connected. 
The entire Christian faith is about being connected. To be disciples of Jesus Christ, we must be connected first to Jesus Christ and then to his body, the church. We need the fellowship of believers. Yet in the culture where connection seems to be so easy, the church lags behind in making disciples. It might first be helpful to understand discipleship just a little bit better. The word Jesus uses in the Great Commission means a follower. It doesn't simply mean being a student. Someone said a, a student learns what the teacher knows, but a disciple or a follower becomes what the teacher is. But the word follower is so different for us as we see it in social media today, right? Has such a different meaning. Followers just mean something you might, you know, view on your free time. Who do you follow, right? Uh, on your phone. If you follow someone on Twitter or on Facebook or on YouTube, you might see what they say or see what they've done. You don't always take in everything that you say or do, even though that video we just saw uh, says otherwise. So this is where our little project's going to come in today. I want you to pull out your phone right now. And those who have Facebook or Twitter or whatever social media you have on your phone, I want you to go ahead and see who you are following. Okay, so if you're on Facebook, you can, there's some directions up there, click on menu, groups, and then your groups. If you're on Twitter, you click on your picture, then you click on following. And then if you're on YouTube, you can see your subscriptions, right? And you click all, you can see. So after you get that, after you pull up who you follow, ask yourself these questions. Who are you following? Do you still look at their posts? Would you say they are a, a big influence? on your life? Are you proud of all of them? Would you be willing to show your neighbor all those groups and the people that you follow? If so, show your neighbor right now. Let's take 30 seconds to be able to show your neighbor of who you're proud of that you follow. Okay. Now, keep your phones out. Are you even following your own church? Okay. Here's some simple instructions and how to follow or like your own church through these platforms. Two are found on Facebook. So if you kind of go to the search bar, look up First Baptist Church of Norristown. <clears throat> or if you already have that one, we do have a second one called the FBC Prayer Page. There we're able to pray for one another. Those are those last second prayers that might come in last second. And I often will look at those before church. If you have YouTube, you can have, we do have a YouTube page for you to share with others about maybe a great message you heard, maybe the music you heard, maybe something special that happened in that service. Like when we did the VBS service, I was sharing that a lot to some people because it was such a great service to see all those kids out for. It's time that you follow your church in that regard. So, you know, go to the, go to the search bar, look up First Baptist Church of Norristown on YouTube. You can find us there. And you'll see the little icon there. So do that right now. Take a couple seconds to do so. And maybe you've already done that. And, you know, go to, go to some videos, comment on them, like them. And when you do this, you're helping the church be an influence to those around you. The more likes and followers that we get, the more likely others will see on their own social media. So it's time, once again, church, to be an influencer and a follower of God. All right. And if you still need help with that after church, we'll gladly help you out after our meeting today. I'm willing to help out anybody that needs help with that. So we spent a lot of time on our own phones and I'm thankful that you guys could try something a little new during one of our messages. Uh, and we've been learning a lot of, we've spending a lot of time also learning what the Bible has to say, but how much time do we actually spend becoming what Jesus is? And don't worry, I'm preaching to myself, just as much as you. Jesus gives us a command to follow. It's what he did while he was here. I mean, it's pretty simple. Our passage even says it, right? It's right there emphasized. Go, baptize, teach. And there's an appropriate order to that as well. It begins with going. Now, I believe going is the most significant part of the Great Commission. Go and make disciples. 
I like to characterize that going as living evangelistically. Remember, at First Baptist Church of Norristown, we exist, what does our sign say? To, to shepherd messy and broken people toward whole, uh, holiness and wholeness to our Savior and healer. That's the community that we want to create. But it begins with living evangelistically. Living evangelistically is not just, you know, simply turning to others and say, you know, turn or burn, you know, just to want to, to one outside a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's living, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's living life in such a way that others see something different in us, right? It's, it's, it's to live a life of grace, a life of compassion a life of hope, a life of forgiveness, and a life of reconciliation. The old cliche is never truer than in matters of faith. People don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. When we show concern and compassion for others, it opens the door for a relationship. A relationship is where transformation takes place. We can never underestimate the power of a relationship in the making of disciples. The relationships begin out there, in the world, in the workplace, at the store, at the park, in the places where we encounter the people we know. And each of us has a story to share of what God has done and is doing in our lives. We must be ready to tell our story, even when we feel our story is insignificant, because it's not. There is no insignificant story in the kingdom of God. Not one. These are personal testimonies. Oftentimes, I'll go to lunch somewhere here in the community. Right, Liz, Liz will wonder, well, why, why don't you just save a few bucks? Grab a sandwich from home, make it at home. But I, I think it's because I have a satellite office. It's, it's all the restaurants that I go to around here. Oftentimes, I'll invite you to, to get lunch somewhere in the community for this very same reason. It's because we can encounter more unchurched people in an hour at a local restaurant than we can by spending one hour here on Sunday morning. Wow, that's harsh to say, right? But it's true. It's true. I don't have many unchurched people stopping by my office to chit chat. We must go where the people are. If we would connect with people, we must connect with them where they are. We spent far too long expecting people to come to church, to come and to check us out, to come and see what we have going on, to come and to worship. The first part of the Great Commission was go. Go where they are. This is the one place the church plays the part of the laggard. We still want people to come when all the Lord ever asks us to do was go. Now, so that, that brings me to this, this, this harsh statement. Tom, Eugene, the parking lot looks amazing out there, and I'm very thankful for that, and a lot of us are, but I'm, I'm afraid to say I really hope it's empty rather than full because the church isn't a place. It's the people here, and we should be out there more telling others of the good news of Jesus Christ. Sunday, I mean, Sunday is really just our time to celebrate who has come for those wins here. Now, we also lag behind the world in the way we communicate the message. Now, hear me clearly on this. Um, the message never changes. So I said this last week, and I'm going to say it again. The method in which the message is delivered is constantly changing. And unless we change our delivery method, we'll fail to be effective and fruitful in connecting to others. Now, that's, like, that's why last week, I had you influence others through your own social media and through your texting. That's why we just spent a minute ago, a few minutes 
on Facebook and on YouTube just now to be an influence to those online. Just like this phone, my parents learned how to, to work theirs in order to communicate best with me. What they wanted to communicate didn't change, right? They still were saying, hey, where are you? Hey, how are you doing? They still told me the same thing they were always telling me. They simply had to adopt the method of communication which I was being accustomed to. The message is the same, but the method is different. The message Christ has entrusted to us is a message of forgiveness, of sins through faith in Jesus Christ. It's a message of hope and a message of life. It's a message of repentance and a message of reconciliation. It's a message of encouragement and grace. That hasn't changed in over 2,000 years. With technology rising and church attendance diminishing in our own country, the method of communicating that message must change too. So as we continue this series on influencers, I hope we realize that God is giving us a vision for reaching our community, our nation, and this world for Christ. It's going to begin with the outreach as we engage faithfully in our world around us. Let us commit to connecting with God, with each other, and with others who are searching for meaning and purpose in their own life. Let us commit to be open to connecting with them whenever and wherever they are. Let us commit to connect with them in whatever means is necessary even if it means sending a simple text. Will you pray with me, church? Lord, we want to connect with you <clears throat> the same way we connected with others, instantaneously. You know, these phones are great, but the power of prayer is even greater and faster. It's the original text message to you, Lord. We ask that you empower us today to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to those who need it. I pray for the big and the small moments that we have in our day-to-day -day life to influence, influence others to your son, Jesus Christ. We ask for clarity in the little window that we have with other non-believers and then bring them into the light of your word. For your word is, it's good, Lord. It's loving. It's powerful and fulfilling. For it is in the Holy Spirit that we pray. Amen. 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 Let's stand and sing.
encourage you to take just a few minutes after our benediction here to go to the bathroom, say hi to others. But we hope you can join us back in here. And online, we'll still be online as well for our next steps of ministry as we're calling this meeting today. As we talk about the exciting and the healing future of our church. Let's receive the benediction now. I pray that you can find your testimony to give to others about the good news of Jesus Christ this week in some way. Your testimony is the story of the time before you knew Christ, when and how you met him, and how he has affected you positively to this day. Keep that in mind as you come across those you follow and those you influence. You never know who might be listening. Go in peace, church.